See if I can get this to go now. There we go. One second. This is not. Okay, can everybody see the, the slideshow now? So I have to start over since the recording was not recording. So again, this is the RFB for Parks Maintenance Services 2102. Uh, good morning, December 29th. I'm Tim Selke. We have Bill Christman, our Parks uh, Superintendent here, Timogen Matsubara, our Supervisor, and Shea Science, our Senior Contract Administrator. Uh, so again, the RFB was released on December 17th. Uh, we have our mandatory pre-bid meeting today, the 29th. Um, if you can't attend the meeting now, this meeting will be recorded and be posted on the purchasing uh, website for uh, review shortly after the conclusion of this meeting. Uh, any questions that anyone might have on the RFB can be submitted in writing. Uh, they are to be submitted to me. My email address is on the screen as well as in the RFB document. Uh, the deadline for questions is January 5th, 2 p.m. Uh, we will then review all questions and answers will be uploaded to Planet Bids uh, by 2 p.m. on January 7th. RFB submittals are due on January 19th uh, by 2 p.m. This bid is going to be submitted via Planet Bids. Uh, it's available on the city website. You must register as a document holder uh, to receive updates and notices, any addendums, uh, the link to the pre-bid meeting, uh, any information regarding the RFB will be sent through Planet Bids. Uh, it's the only place to get information on this. And uh, the submittal process will be via e-bidding, uh, which is new uh, for this particular category when we last, since we last bid it. Uh, and Shay will speak to that a little bit later uh, in the meeting. So I'm going to briefly go through the RFB document. Um, it is not meant to be all inclusive. Uh, I'm going to go over some highlights uh, of the document. I highly encourage everyone who's uh, considering uh, bidding on this to thoroughly review the entire document, um, but I will highlight some specific sections that we think are important. Um, this is page three of the RFB document is this guarantee of good faith. Um, there is no bid bond associated with this project, um, but the guarantee of good faith document must be signed and submitted with your RFB. Um, this indicates that you have either attended this meeting today or you have watched uh, the video that's posted on the website. And so this is an important submittal, so please be sure not to overlook it. Be sure to complete it and submit it with your bid package. I'm just going to go through the introduction here. So again, today we are soliciting bids to provide parks maintenance services. This is for parks maintenance service category C, which is our community parks and school athletic fields. It is our uh, intent to have a contract awarded and successful contractor providing these services starting on Saturday, March 27th, 2021. This contract is for a two year term with up to two additional two-year optional extensions. Over the years, the City of Carlsbad Parks and the city as a, as a whole have consistently uh, rated very high uh, in, in quality of life uh, surveys uh, by, by residents. Specific to parks in this proposal, the recent survey results indicated 95% of residents polled were satisfied with the quality of the city's parks and 89% of residents polled were satisfied with the quality of the city's trails and walking paths. Uh, it is our goal, our intent to maintain uh, the, these, these metrics and to hopefully uh, increase those ratings uh, and satisfaction amongst the city residents. Like other cities, Carlsbad operates in a lean manner with high community expectations for value, accountability, and transparency. 
it is important to continuously ensure that taxpayers are receiving the most efficient and cost-effective delivery of high-quality city services, and that is our intent uh, with this RFP and this agreement for parks maintenance services. Section three of the RFP document starts with scope of work category A. Category A is applicable to all of our parks maintenance uh, service categories. We have five total. Uh, this is just one of our uh, maintenance categories. I will quickly go through some of these uh, sections. Again, I'm gonna skip over some areas. Um, so I would encourage you to thoroughly review them. Um, section one, section 108, contractor accepts the sites of services in their present physical condition at the time of contract and award and agrees to make no demands upon the city for any improvements or alterations thereof. I highly encourage anybody looking to um, submit a bid on this project to go to all of the park sites, uh, review the conditions, review the technical specifications, the expectations, uh, and please take that into consideration when submitting your bid. There is an expectation of a response to emergencies by the contractor. During the term of the contractor, uh, the contractor is responding to emergencies within one hour of notification. The contractor shall perform weekly maintenance inspections independently and a monthly maintenance inspection jointly with the city. We have assigned uh, inspectors that are assigned to our parks uh, maintenance services. We have one inspector assigned to this category. He would be your primary point of contact and would be the person that would be uh, joining the contractor on the monthly maintenance inspections. These inspections are visual and operational may include operation of the irrigation systems. Um, contractors shall take immediate steps to correct any observed irregularities and submit a report regarding identified irregularities to the city. Contractors shall incorporate and comply with all applicable stormwater pollution prevention best management practices. The city has a, a very strong track record with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Um, we intend to keep that, and it is our, uh, our, our goal <laughs> to make sure that we are in compliance with all of the uh, current municipal uh, codes, municipal codes, and permits related to stormwater pollution. So please be familiar with the Regional Water Quality Control Board Municipal Permit, the City of Carlsbad Jurisdictional Urban Runoff Management Plan, and Carlsbad Municipal Codes relating to stormwater um, pollution prevention. Additionally, the contractor shall maintain, shall have and maintain a valid C27 contractor's license, must be valid throughout the term of the contract. And contractors shall provide two certified irrigation technicians per scope of work. So this is scope of work category C. Uh, it is expected that the contractor will provide two certified irrigation technicians assigned to this, uh, this work category. The hours and days of maintenance services. This is a seven day a week contract, 365 days a year. Hours of maintenance are 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, these are community park sites again, so they are very heavily used and especially heavily used on weekends and holidays. So um, please be aware of that. Additionally, after the execution of the contract, the contractor shall submit work schedules to the city for written approval. These schedules are gonna be very important, specifically relating to the school athletic fields. Uh, when we maintain these, these school sites, we do need to schedule our maintenance with the programmatic, programmatic needs of the school district. So we've established a pretty good relationship and we've established um, some, some baseline times for maintenance and we'll need to coordinate those schedules with the school district. So this will be very important. Um, at the beginning of the contract. There may be a time when the city takes on additional sites or may need to uh, expand the scope of work under this contract to something that is not currently included. Uh, we do um, reserve the right to uh, negotiate with the contractor uh, fixed price or time and materials prices for any expanded scope of work for the contract. Uh, and as well, the city does reserve the right to perform work with other forces outside of this, um, the contractor in, in this contract. 
Additionally, there may be the need for uh, extra work, which would be uh, work that is not included in the regular scope of work, uh, things such as irrigation retrofits or landscape enhancement projects, uh, things of that nature where we'd be looking to the contractor to perform these extra work projects for us. Uh, we would reach out to the contractor looking for cost proposals um, and then to, uh, to move forward with work. Anything under the threshold of the city's purchasing policies of $60,000 we can award um, in, under this contract. It is our expectation though that extra work is just that. Extra work is performed by staff that are not performing the regular routine maintenance tasks and that that work continues on while the extra work is being uh, performed at the same time. That we're not pulling staff from performing regular routine maintenance tasks to do the extra work projects. Communications and emergency response. Again, there will be emergencies that contractor will need to respond to. You should have and maintain a single telephone number with a local San Diego region area code um, that may be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, regarding inquiries, complaints that the city may receive uh, outside of the normal hours from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, an answering service would be acceptable, but the city requires a return call within 30 minutes and again response within uh, one hour. Inspections, meetings, and reports. So again, the contractor will meet with the city that will be with our, uh, predominantly with our inspector, but could be with other city staff on a monthly basis. Uh, that is walking all of the sites, identifying any areas or needs uh, of deficiencies, along with reviewing schedules and proposals. Uh, safety issues are brought to the attention of the city at this time. Uh, the contractor shall meet weekly to review schedules. Oh, thank you. And the contractor shall meet weekly at minimum to review schedules and performance, resolve problems, and um, address any concerns. Bonnie just shared with me that my screen was not sharing, so let's try that again. Is the, let's see. Bill, is the PowerPoint showing? Yes, thank you. So, the, in relation to the uh, inspections, again, we have our, our parks inspectors and we have an inspection rating system that is used. Uh, the inspection rating system is called Intellex. Uh, this system is used to document site conditions. Uh, it is used to communicate with the, uh, the contractor any deficiencies or needs throughout the site. We have the ability for the contractor to then respond back to, um, to notes or comments made by the inspectors. And this system is also used um, to identify and evaluate the ratings and deductions from payments uh, in the system. So as stewards of taxpayers' money, uh, we are not in a position to pay for services that have not been rendered. Uh, so in order to avoid deductions from payment for services that were not rendered, the contractor must receive a total rating of a 95% uh, for the technical specifications and the general specifications. So the total rating for each site should represent the total percentage of the work performed during that month. Again, this will be uh, reviewed and discussed with the contractor during the monthly uh, site inspections and can be reviewed and discussed throughout the entire month with the parks inspector uh, as needed. Safety is obviously paramount for this this project, uh, these are public parks. They are open during the times when maintenance services are being performed. Uh, so the contractor agrees to perform all services in such a manner as to meet all standards for safe practices. Uh, that goes for its work practices, equipment, machines, materials, um, anything related to the services being provided. Contractors should not interfere with public use of the premises. Uh, again, these are public parks, they're open. So we need to conduct their operations as to offer the least possible obstruction and inconvenience to the public. Um, if the, in the event that operations must be performed when public are present, you must be courteous. 
uh, please, we ask that you know the public is uh, informed of operations that might affect them and request persons to move out of the area if needed. We are subject to local noise ordinance, 7 a.m. So no noise prior to 7 a.m. Um, that includes leaf blowers, power equipment, anything of the such. There may be an op option or opportunity uh, in an emergency situation uh, after 7 p.m. or before 7 a.m. when an item like a chainsaw or something would have to be used. Obviously, in an emergency situation, there can be an exception, but under general circumstances, no noise before 7 a.m. Use of pesticides. So all work involving the use of pesticides shall be in compliance with all federal, state, and local laws. Uh, in the appendix to this RFP, we have a City of Carlsbad Integrated Pest Management Plan. Uh, please do review that thoroughly. Uh, we refer to this as an Organics First uh, IPM. So we are um, utilizing organic herbicides and pesticides first before moving on to any synthetic chemicals. Uh, please do review that very carefully um, and incorporate those into your plan. Schedules regarding pesticide application are going to be very important. So we do require the contractor to prepare and submit a schedule for pesticide usage throughout the term of the agreement. Um, and again, we are maintaining school sites. When it comes to applications of herbicides or chemicals on school sites, we need to be uh, especially careful. We need to be in compliance with the Safe Schools Act. And we do need to notify the school district well in advance of any applications. So these schedules are going to be critical that we, we have them and that we communicate carefully. We do all proper posting and we've notified the public and the appropriate entities uh, when any applications are going to be done. Disposal, trash and debris, all landscape debris shall be disposed through a landscape material recycling center or reused. It should not be disposed of in a landfill. Contractors shall dispose of weeds, leaves, cuttings and other debris as work progresses. You know, um, debris is not to be stored on site. Uh, the first collection of trash is to be removed from the sites daily by 8 a.m. City dumpsters, uh, the use of city dumpsters is not allowed. The contractor needs to you know, collect the debris and remove it from site um, as work progresses and immediately. There are a variety of reports uh, in records that the city will ask for. We do look for a monthly project report uh, from the contractor to indicate the overall condition of the sites, any unusual or problem areas, uh, and then also include any action that the contractor is going to be taken to rectify these situations and the time frame in which they will be completed. Additionally, uh, there are playgrounds at the majority of these uh, sites and the monthly playground safety inspections are to be performed by this contractor. Shall have a staff member that is certified, a certified playground safety inspector through the NRPA. Um, and those are additional reports that will be required each month. There are turf renovations involved uh, in, in this agreement, not only to the athletic fields, but to all turf throughout the park sites, they are to be done uh, one time per year, according to a, a, a schedule that we have established. There is a, a pretty set schedule for the renovation of the athletic fields. The remainder of the turf areas, the passive turf areas can be uh, coordinated with our inspectors, um, but because of the heavy use of the school athletic fields and the, the sports fields, we do have a pretty tight schedule um, for the renovation of those fields. Irrigation, maintenance, repair, and testing. So the city shall provide or reimburse the contractor for irrigation parts, uh, anything that exceeds $500 per month with the city's approval. So we will be looking for supporting documentation that supports your reimbursement request. These would be uh, receipts from the vendor where you purchased the equipment from, and documentation of where these uh, parts and pieces were used. Contractor shall provide all labor and equipment to provide the maintenance of the irrigation systems. 
irrigation testing frequency is weekly. So please pay attention to that. Obviously, irrigation uh, is extremely important. And the proper functioning of these systems uh, needs to be maintained. And we feel that that weekly testing uh, can ensure proper functioning of all the irrigation systems. Uh, treatment of weeds, spot treatment, removal of weeds is a weekly frequency. Um, please pay attention to that. Tree work within 15 feet of the ground. So we do have a separate scope of work category for uh, tree maintenance, but under this agreement, contractor is responsible for tree work within 15 feet of the ground. I draw your attention to the frequency table uh, in section 26, which I'll show you in, in a little bit, uh, which kind of gives a, a, a summary of these maintenance frequencies. Again, flowering, deadheading of flowering plants. Um, as I mentioned, I guess the last time, you know, the city flower is the bird of paradise. We have a lot of them throughout the city sites and we think it's important um, that the, they are maintained along with other flowering plants. So please uh, recognize maintenance frequencies for deadheading of flowering plants. Mulching, a minimum three inch layer of mulch shall be maintained. Uh, we do have an approved mulch. It is MB Organics Carlsbad Stump Mulch. Um, so please do uh, take that into consideration. We would be open to looking at other um, mulch types, although I will say that we have looked at a few types over the years and have not found uh, anything that has really met our standard uh, aside from the Carlsbad stumps, but we are willing uh, to look at and potentially approve uh, an additional or a different material uh, that would need to be submitted to us uh, for approval. So disease and pest control, uh, again, we are expecting the sites to be maintained free of disease. One thing I would like to draw your attention to, uh, 1304, contractors shall eradicate or remove bees. We do not kill bees, so all bee removals are live removals. Um, that would need to be, you know, hive removals are all live removals. So please take that into consideration. We do not kill bees. Leaf litter, debris control, all litter, paper, glass, trash, undesirable materials are removed as needed, but at minimum once a day. Uh, supplemental litter pickup, hand sweeping, Areas that are inaccessible to equipment is as needed, but also minimum daily. We expect turf to be repaired as needed. So damaged, vandalized, bare, or thin turf should be overseeded, plugged, or sodded as required uh, to maintain acceptable quality of turf, especially in relation to the sports fields. All trash receptacles should be checked at least daily and they're to be emptied whenever more than half full or as needed to prevent objectionable odors or other unsanitary conditions. All trash and green waste accumulated shall be removed from the site immediately upon collection. The cost to dispose of trash and green waste is at the contractor's expense. Sweeping, hand washing hard surfaces. Again, this would be power washing of walkway steps Concrete underneath picnic areas, uh, these are to be cleaned and washed for the removal of foreign objects like gum, food and drink spills, grease, paint, graffiti. This is as needed, but at a minimum of daily. I know I keep saying this, but these are community park sites and they get a lot of use, uh, especially with sports groups, the picnic areas. So, you know, things like uh, spilled uh, uh, Gatorades and, and gum and those types of things are common, um, but we do expect them to be addressed um, at a minimum of daily. Drinking fountains, drains and sand traps to be cleaned and cleared at minimum daily. Fencing, decorative, bollards, chain link, welded wire, steel post, wood, vinyl coated post and rail, tube steel fencing shall be repaired or replaced as needed by the contractor. The city will provide or reimburse the contractor for materials that exceed $6,000 per year with the city's approval. Again, we would be requiring um, backup supporting documentation for expenses related to the replacement of fence panels, 
uh, three rail, post and rail fencing or chain link fencing. Contractors shall inspect all picnic tables, benches, slabs, barbecues, tot lots, trash receptacles as needed, but again, at minimum daily. Deficiencies are expected to be corrected immediately. If they can't be, they need to be reported to the city. Stocking of dog waste bag stations, uh, the doggy pots, there are, um, they are out there. They do need to be stocked and kept stocked at all times. Please um, pay attention to that when doing your site visits, specifically to the Alco Norte Dog Park. Uh, same BMPs, all stormwater pollution prevention devices shall be maintained by the contractor in good order. Again, the city will reimburse the contractor for materials that exceed $6,000 per year with the city's approval, again, supporting documentation, uh, backing up the purchase of the expenses of the BMPs. The blockhouse restrooms, uh, the contractor shall unlock the park blockhouse restrooms between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. We have a overnight janitorial service that comes in and locks the bathrooms in the evening cleans and locks the bathrooms in the evening. They also stock all of the materials when they're cleaning. So when the contractor opens the bathroom at 7 a.m., they are should be cleaned and stocked. It is our expectation though that the restrooms would be checked throughout the day and restocked as needed by this contractor. Um, clogs would need to be addressed by the contractor. Graffiti, again, either removed or if unable to be removed shall be painted over with the material approved by the city. Contractors shall inspect blockhouse and portable restrooms, report damage or vandalism to the city immediately, as well as any unsafe or unsightly conditions. As I mentioned before with the turf renovations, the sports field renovations are required annually and they usually occur during June, July, and August. We have a pretty tight schedule for these. The contractor must have adequate staff or utilize a subcontractor uh, to be able to perform the task. The, the work must be completed during the first week of the scheduled closure time to allow for seed and sod establishment. We typically have a four week closure for the sports fields um, and the work must be done during the first week to allow the remaining three weeks for the, the field to, to establish and heal. Please note that renovations will be going on in several parks at the same time. So there will be a need for uh, a, an adequate staffing and equipment to accomplish the, the goal. The infield maintenance, patching, tamping, maintenance of the dirt infields, watering. Um, again, these fields are, are heavily used. Uh, areas around the batter's boxes, the pitcher's mound, catcher's areas. These areas tend to get uh, worn out. They require patching with clay, ta uh, tamping. Infields tend to get dry in the summer months. They need to be watered to keep the field uh, in good playing condition and avoid um, possibilities of injury due to dry or dusty fields or holes, divots, and that sort of thing. We do have a variety of synthetic turf fields at these sites. Um, the synthetic turf maintenance is a responsibility of the contractor. As weekly sweeping, monthly grooming, and as well as the replacement and the maintenance of the infill. So we, we do have these fields uh, tested for um, impact attenuation, and we typically receive a report and we can share with the contractor where any infill will be needed but it is the responsibility of the contractor to ensure proper infill heights and depths throughout the fields. And there is a quarterly antimicrobial um, treatment that is to be applied to the fields with an approved um, uh, product for the control of bacteria. We typically close the fields for a, a day to allow the contractor to uh, apply the antimicrobial spray. This section 26 is the maintenance minimum frequency schedule that I referred to. It is not all inclusive, but it does give a good overview of some of the key maintenance tasks and the frequencies associated with those tasks. I would encourage you to please uh, review this. 
So this contract is going to be awarded based upon a best value evaluation. So it is not strictly a low bid, but it is based upon certain criteria such as cost, uh, conformance to the solicitation, qualifications, previous performance, and references, as well as any uh, additional services offered. We do reserve the right to perform a pre-award survey of the contractor to determine their ability to perform the services. Uh, and we do intend to award only one contract, but we do reserve the right to award multiple contracts if needed. There is section 36 talks about conflict of interest. You know, please understand no employee or member of the employee's immediate family or elected or appointed member of the city government may participate in this procurement process. Uh, there is the city does have the ability to terminate the contract, although it is not our goal. Our goal is to have a successful partnership with the contractor to last for the entire six, you know, potential six years uh, of this agreement. Um, our goal is to, to work and keep uh, a good working relationship with the contractor for the entire terms of the agreement. Here's a quick list of submittals uh, associated with this, please. This is uh, section 57. Uh, just again, shows everything that needs to be submitted with your bid, the guarantee of good faith letter, the transmittal letter, all of these supporting documents, the proposed cost of service, all of these items need to be submitted with your bid, so please do pay attention to that. I'll turn it over to Shay now. Shay, if you wanna just speak briefly about the uh, e-bidding process and Planet Bids. Thank you, Tim. Um, good morning to staff and to those in attendance. Um, I'll just reiterate what uh, Tim has said already. I encourage you to sign up on Planet Bid so that you will receive any addenda that are issued or any email communications regarding this bid. Uh, once again, my name is Shay Sines. I work in the purchasing department and I'm helping the department facilitate this bid via Planet Bids. If you have any questions about how to submit your bid via Planet Bids, please feel free to email me or I encourage you to contact Planet Bids customer service. I found them to be very helpful. Uh, again, I encourage you to review the bid documents thoroughly. Be familiar with what you're required to submit. Uh, the submittal process is quite simple for this bid. Uh, it would be simply uploading uh, two documents, the completed bid package, and then the financial statements are submitted as a separate document. Um, I think that's it. Thank you for your interest in doing city, uh, doing business with the city of Carlsbad. Thank you, Shay. So again, just a quick uh, a repeat of the schedule for the RFB. Uh, and actually I have another slide on this, but we do intend to go to city council to award this agreement uh, at the end of February. And it is our uh, need to start services on March 27th, 2021. We would wanted to try to give the contractor as much time as possible uh, after the award of the contract to uh, ramp up to get your staff and equipment in place um, due to the rebid. This is a little bit of a shorter time frame, but we do still feel that a month, a little more than a month is adequate to, to do that. There are a few appendices uh, associated in, in this RFB. So again, I mentioned the IPM plan is very important. Please review it and look at it. If there's any questions, feel free to submit them in writing about that. There is a sample agreement. It's just for reference. It is not meant to be completed and the contractor's proposed cost of service is Appendix C. Here is where you'll, you can complete um, your cost of service for each of the sites listed. Please note there is one um, additional site, it's not listed in this, in this slide here, but at Poinsettia Community Park, we have uh, an, an additional Area coming on board or beginning to get uh, constructed soon is a new dog park, parking lot, and restroom. So we have asked for pricing for that. Um, that has not even begun to be uh, constructed yet, but may be completed by the end 
of the term of this first, the first term of this agreement. So we would like pricing for that. We have included um, uh, plans that show the scope of work for the dog park, the parking lot, and, and the restroom uh, to be able to, uh, to provide pricing for that. So please know that would only be awarded with notice to proceed, obviously, once the project is complete. So that concludes uh, this pre-bid meeting. Again, just for final reiteration of the timelines, January 19th, uh, 2 p.m. is the deadline for RFP submittals. If you have questions, please uh, send them to me in writing, and Shay and I will ensure that the answers are uploaded to Planet Bids by January 7th. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join us today, uh, watching the video, and I look forward to receiving uh, all of your, your bids. So thank you so much and have a great day.